Hi there. Let's talk a little bit about repurposing. We as educators, of course, repurpose a lot of different things. You might have seen me a while back using a baby bottle drying rack for storing words where kids can hunt and peck them out of the grass. Uh, I reuse a lot of different materials, but I also repurpose things that I think can be used in my lessons. Honestly, just to build a little more uh, novelty and engagement, make things a little more exciting uh, during the Orton Gillingham lesson format. So we know one of the games that can be really beneficial for your students is the game of concentration. It's really good for kids that have some working memory issues and playing this game just really, really helps with strategizing as well. And you can use concentration for so many different skills. You could just use letters. You can use um, words with common patterns. You could use words with different morphemes to match. It really depends. So I found this uh, repurposed snack tray that I thought could be used for concentration. So um, I did find this idea from another Instagram page, but I have my own little spin on it. So I'm going to show you how I did that in this video today. So the snack tray is called Match Up. So I suppose this is for your your uh, lovingly said picky eater out there, right? Um, you may have a child who, oh, okay, you know, they need to make sure that they're eating all their foods. So this uh, company, Fred, came up with this matching food tray idea called Matchup. And so this is what it looks like in the box. Okay, I will put the link to that. When you take it out of the box, looks like this. It has 18 different spaces and there's a little question mark on each one. And you, if you were using them for a picky eater, can put little snack foods in there or um, things that they have to try and find in there and make matches. Maybe there's two little chunks of apples that they have to match up the apples in the same spots or the broccoli or the cucumbers or something right and then maybe one little spot had um, a gummy bear and they had to find the other spot that had the gummy bear so if you have a picky eater this would be a great idea um, uh, my kids are kind of beyond that stage although they do still challenge me with certain things that i make for dinner let's be honest all right so what i did with this is I grabbed my handy dandy dry erase tape. If you don't have this, Scotch 3M makes it. Highly recommend. And this is very wide dry erase tape that you can trim. Um, but a lot comes in a roll. And I got a ruler just to do a quick measurement to see how much the little spaces were, um, but length and width wise, and of course a pair of scissors. What the heck did she do? Okay, so when you press on one of these and it opens up, you lift it. I put, instead of a treat, I cut a little piece of dry erase tape and peeled it off and stuck it inside. And why did I do that? Because if I'm going to use this with my students during an Orton Gillingham lesson, I would need something, first of all, that I can reuse over and over and over again. Secondly, it has to be something that is quick. It can't be something that detracts or takes too much time away from the lesson, even though there is, you know, a fun novelty side to it. Um, I don't think most magnetic letters would fit in there. However, I do think that if you used, and let me see if I have one actually right over here, I do. If you use, let me grab one as I'm thinking out loud here. Oh gosh, sorry about that. All right, I think if you put one of the Wilson letter tiles, I do think that will fit. Let's try it. Yes, 
it does fit. So that is actually a really, really just thought of this while I was making the video like right now. <laughs> so that is one thing that you could do. You could pop in letters in there. Um, and, but the only thing is that is that, okay, well, what matches do you want to make? You could double up. You could, you know, find two spots that have, you know, the same letter or something like that for like a letter identification activity. Um, but maybe think about how you would want to do that. If I'm using it for a game of concentration, I am going to go back to my original idea, which is to use the dry erase tape. So I was, I would open up all of the little spots. Whoop. There's 18. Okay. So you do the math there. Think about how many matches. Okay. So you're going to make nine matches and I'm going to open up all the little doors. Okay. So I've got all my little doors here. Um, some people, if you have like little objects that may rhyme, like I know a lot of teachers have collections of just little objects that um, for like phonological awareness skills, things like that, you could do that if you're, you know, in a speech lesson. Um, so something, something else to consider. What I was thinking was I would um, take my dry erase marker and write on the dry erase tape. Um, in this case, I would match uppercase with lowercase. So a really simple beginning letter ID activity. But what would be beneficial, whoops, I want to write on there is if you used this particularly, sorry, as I'm like writing this, um, for letter reversals. So for a child who really struggles with letter reversals, this is a great idea. And don't be afraid to use um, the same letter more than once if you are doing reversal. So do, um, but the only thing is that like, it might be a little trickier to get those matches, but take a look at what I've done here. So I've got all my letters. Of course, I can't do all the letters of the alphabet in there, but what I did do is pick out the ones that I, um, you know, a few beginning letters, of the alphabet, but then I threw in ones that, okay, common letter reversals, like the B, D, P, Q, uh, letter Z as well. And then close all those up, snap them shut. Kids might like to do that. Um, sometimes before I play concentration, I let a child see everything. Like if it's cards in a deck, before I play the game, I sometimes will let them see all the cards. And I actually will have them practice making matches even before I set the game up make all the matches. So sometimes kids need that little um, game rehearsal. Okay, so here comes the fun part. So the game is all set up. And uh, I also like to use a marker, just a quick tip, um, that has a, um, a little felt eraser on the tip or on the cap so that it's easier to reach in and erase. So if a child made a match, then what you might want to let them do is if they make a match, they can go in and, and erase those. All right, so let's take a look. So I've got Q and F. So that's not a match. And, you know, this is a pretty fun independent activity if you're doing it like, you know, if you were at home. However, I, now there's B and D, right? I think this game is a really um, helpful and appropriate time to do some kid watching and making note of, you know, are they saying the correct letter name? Um, are you having them give the sound that represents it or perhaps a keyword? Okay, so here's a match, right? So you may want to let them just sort of reach in and erase it. 
and then leave the doors open, obviously, to make it easier while they're making more matches, right? You don't want to keep the doors shut um, until, okay, so there's another one, Z, until they find all the matches, okay? So I sort of kicked it up a notch by having the dry erase marker in there because it just makes it so um, much easier to repurpose and without having to, you know, cut up little tiny word cards and things like that before you make it. Um, the initial prep to snip apart the little squares, which are, by the way, about an inch by one inch um, for a length and width size. The initial prep took me hmm, probably a about 10 minutes to measure, cut, and affix all of the little uh, dry erase squares into the board. But as I say, I've said this before, one and done. Once it's done, you don't have to do it again. Uh, if you do have a happy little helper that help, likes to help you cut and laminate things, this is definitely um, a task that you can hand along or even give to maybe um, a teenager that you know that perhaps wants to earn a little bit of extra money, right? We all know, probably all know somebody in that case. All right, so once again, the memory snack tray repurposed for concentration um, and use it not just with letters you could use it with maybe um, syllables um, or rhyming words things like that so let me know what you think of this idea if you plan to try it out I will have the link to this snack tray um, I really appreciate you following me uh, you can catch all my videos on YouTube um, there's usually one new one every week which is great to see and you can also catch all of them in the literacy nest video vault all right I will see you next time